The Time, 1986. The Place, Beaverton, Oregon. The Task. Hey, what's good guys? My name is Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got something awesome to talk about and it's these bad boys right here. This, my friends, is the Nike Air Max One, but not just any one. It's technically the one before the one, even though there was another shoe named the one before the one. It wasn't the name of it. They called them the Air Max Zeros. The marketing was the one before the one, but this kind of the in-between. Now, before we talk about the shoes, I just want to say, first off, shout out to whoever the team is that worked on this shoe. I think that they're incredible. This is my kind of storytelling. This is real story telling this is not like some made up story fabricated thing of moonlight some people sitting underneath the moon camping out for a shoe that never sold out those kind of fake stories are awful they are bad for sneakers but stories like this are not just real stories it's history and this is what you're supposed to do especially when you're a brand like nike or jordan and most of your releases seem to be heritage releases where you're bringing back what you already did most of the time they don't do it in the best way but this is one of those times where they just knocked it out of the park man these are fantastic so so they don't come in an original box, which is the one thing that I think is unfortunate. They also don't come with the little like tech card that I wish that they did, but the box itself is awesome. Uh, it's kind of like this weird distress box. It's got a see-through logo on the top lid. And then they also have the see-through air unit. How can you not think that that's cool? So yeah, I really dig this. I think that it's really awesome. The shoe itself is amazing. And uh, I did a ton of research about this specific shoe because they were throwing me off a little bit when I was comparing them to the other Air Max ones that I own, which are these guys right here so like the midsoles were different and stuff like that so i originally thought that they were just bringing back the big bubble turns out that they brought back kind of the original version of the shoe that released in 86 and then they decided to switch things up mid-production which still happens today that's how we came up with this guy right here so it's got a slightly different midsole and things like that basically the reason behind that was after the shoe was released they were finding out through customer feedback that they were a little bit unstable and on top of that the bags were actually breaking especially if you lived in in colder climate areas so the plastics or whatever that they were using at the time just weren't as durable as they are now and so that's how we ended up with this guy right here so the midsoles are different the air units are different the overall like build and things like that are the same but the shape and all that stuff is much more true to the original in this guy whereas this one you know got the chunky toe and things like that so i just really love these on top of that i've always found air max ones to be very uncomfortable so the 90 has always been my favorite these though are hella comfortable like it's ridiculous like these and the nike SB Air Jordan 4s. I don't know what type of polyurethane they're using, but I hope that we see that type of polyurethane from here on out, even though we're probably not going to. <sighs> Now the shoe itself obviously was designed by Tinker Hatfield. He had one specific task, which was to kind of revolutionize the running game or the running footwear scene, which is what this was all about. He actually wanted to take what was first introduced in 1978, which was the Air Tailwind. That was Nike's first, you know, air unit model and all that stuff. It was embedded in the shoe, but he wanted to expose it because when he was overseas, he saw a building that was inside out. Whoa. Reminds me of somebody else that we got in the future. His name was Virgil, who did something very similar with Reconstructed, Deconstructed. Or is it the opposite? Deconstructed, Reconstructed. I don't know. Now, as far as the shoe itself is concerned, they still keep all of the Air Max One attributes that you already know and love. But again, they just kind of upgraded on certain things. The outsole is exactly the same as some of the other ones. So very similar design. There's not much change there, which is awesome. So I assume that this is how they look back in the 80s. You got the whole waffle sole, the lugs, all that kind of stuff paying tribute to the original Nike runners. The midsole itself is polyurethane. Like I was saying earlier though, this polyurethane is really comfortable. Like like I cannot overstate that enough. It's just weird to me because like, I've worn polyurethane retros for how long now? You know what I'm saying? And it's always been a thing. Like that's where like I think the Nike SB Jordan 4 is like, I don't know how to call it. It just kind of disrupts what I was told originally by other people where it's like, oh no, we have to firm up the midsoles to make them last longer. We have to firm up the midsole so the paint doesn't crack. I've been wearing those SBs nonstop since I got them because they're so damn comfortable and the paint hasn't cracked at all. So what is the deal here? Like how come we can't get this all the time, especially for the pricing? So I again hope that this is like the new new and we get something that's this comfortable from here on out will we though only time will tell i just really hope so the tech specs that's inside of the polyurethane midsole is a four foot encapsulated air sole unit and then in the heel it's actually a big ass bubble this is not like the other stuff this is one of the things that i thought was fascinating is that when you go to the sneakers app this is the one time so every time we go on there there's always either something wrong or it's corny this is just straight history there's three full paragraphs chock full 
full of amazing information. Whoever wrote this deserves a raise. Not only did they write it really well, but it's well researched, it's awesome. But basically this was the shoe that was released in 86. And according to that sneakers article, there was possibly upwards of 400,000 pairs made and released. Were they recalled? I don't know, nobody said anything about that. I wonder if this is the beginning of Nike's like amazing return policy, because they like guarantee their stuff, no problem. If your air unit breaks and you send it in with a Nike claims file, like they'll give you a refund, no problem. If you ever have anything rip, tear, break that is not considered ordinary wear and tear, there's a place on Nike's website where you can file a claim, you can send the shoes to Beaverton, they will inspect them, and if they feel that they are faulty, they will give you the full retail value as a Nike credit. So I don't know if this is where this started. All I know is that 400,000 pairs is a lot, and for them to be like, oh sh the bubbles aren't good, you know what I mean? Like, I just couldn't imagine the mad scramble that must have happened to where then in 1987 is when the Air Max one that we all know and love was actually released. Same colors and all that stuff. That was the trippiest part. I was seeing original ads of these. Some of them look just like this with this midsole, no lines, very clean. And then other ones look like the ones that we've seen before. Like some of them are actual OGs with the lines on the midsole. They got the booklet, they got the box, all that stuff, same colorway, but it was just a different shoe, even though it's the same shoe. So yeah, it was just the more updated version, the one that we all now know as the Air Max One. But this was, again, the Air Max One before the One. Now, the upper on these guys is supposed to be just like the original or as close to it as possible. So basically, we've got synthetic suede on everything. So all of these panels are all synthetic suede or what I like to call felt. Normally, I don't like this, but on this particular release or releases like this, I don't mind it because this was how it was on the originals. I love it when it's like OG. I don't love it, though, when it just feels like a budget cut. You know what I mean? So like that's the one thing like as long as this was the way that the original product was i'm totally happy with it but if we're supposed to get a premium air jordan 12 and it feels like it's like synthetic that's not what i want and that is where the one comparison with like this one pair that i have the suede on here is great and it's actual suede versus the synthetic stuff here i don't care either way like i said because this is og so like i feel like cool like I got a relic of a product. The textiles are my favorite though. We've got two different types of nylon. We've got basically an open celled mesh on the toe and most of the tongue. And then on the top of the tongue and the collar area is a really slick, silky looking nylon. I love how this is. This is one of my favorite materials on 80s runners. It's so weird to say because it's like the stuff that you really don't see, like it's very minimal, but it's my favorite. Sh I really love the way that this looks. I think it's fantastic. The Nike Air Max branding on the tongue patch looks amazing. The Nike Air on the heel. One of the things that I thought was really interesting is I saw this on Tinker Sketch. It specifically says as a call out, no reflective. So as a runner, do you know when that was like mandated? I don't know that if it's mandated, I just think that it should be there. So you think that it's just common courtesy? Yeah. So you don't think that it's required anymore? I thought that you're supposed to have something on a running product in case you run at night. I don't know about that. Let me look it up real quick. I think you're right. I couldn't find anything that said that it was required. I think that it's just a thing that brands do as like, hey, they can see you. But these guys right here have no reflective on there. It was done on purpose, and I just found that to be interesting. Now, the insole is this bad boy right here. I don't actually want to call it a bad boy. I just did it out of habit. It's not like a great insole or anything. You can't remove it if you wanted to, but there are perforations in there. There's a mild little arch piece. It's not anything crazy. There's also the size labeling on the collar itself or the interior collar lining. For those of you guys that buy Jordan Retros, especially the OG ones, like an Air Jordan 1, you've been seeing stuff like this being brought back, and this is just something that was done primarily primarily in the 80s and sometimes in the early 90s. And so that's why it's on there. Uh, another change between this and say the other Air Max ones that you might see on a shelf, this is something that you might not be able to see very well, but the padding that's inside of the collar, the heel, it's thinned out. So it looks much more like the original product. Now, is this gonna replace the regular Air Max ones that we see on shelves? I highly doubt it. Like, I, I just don't think so. Like we haven't seen anything replace the Air Jordan 1 High OG. They just kind of have fine tuned it. And then even though there's the 85 cut version, they have not discontinued the OG high. So I think that this is what this is. Will we see more original colorways like this? That's the thing that I don't know because I believe that according to the story, this was the only colorway that had released like this where before they like did the switch up. And then we got the white and blue ones like how we know now. I hope that we get a blue one like that just because, because I like that colorway. But if we don't, and this is the only release like this, I'm still happy because these are awesome. Now, as far as sizing is concerned, they do fit true to size. Whatever you typically wear, that's exactly 
exactly what I would order. There is one thing to note, you can feel the heel to toe drop. So the, the way that the midsole is sculpted and shaped, you can feel it. You can also see it within the insole itself. It's kind of shaped like that. I can't remember what shoe was like this, but there was another one. Was it the, the Pegasus? Sorry, there's so many shoes, man. It's, it's getting harder and harder. <gasps> That's what she said. But anyway, so you can see within the end sole that this is the drop. You can feel that when you're inside the shoe, it goes away pretty quickly. That was one of the things though that has always like, usually strayed me away from buying runners, especially as like a teenager or a young adult where I just never liked that feeling. It's not until I've gotten to be an old guy where like, I'm like, yeah, it's not bad. And again, these things are squishy as like it's crazy. Like I'm almost don't even believe that this is polyurethane. Like I wonder if this is like injective pylon. That's how I feel about those Jordan SBs. How is this this comfortable? And why aren't the rest of them like this? Answer me. So sound off below and let us know what you think about these down below in the comment section. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one. And I had a whole thing and I got Taylor Swift stuck in my head. It's me.